Part 8. Wake up to me. Part 8. Wake up to me. Hi. This is Shihan Zaini, your archery coach and director of Who Archery Mission as well as the director for the Coaches Committee, Archery Association of India. You are in level 1 with a Rika Bo Specialization Workshop of the Who Archery Mission and the Archery Association of Tamil Nadu TA80. In this section, that is the 8th section of the Rika of Tuning, you are going to learn about documenting your equipment. Now what is there in documenting on the equipment? Once you have completed the bare sharp plane test and before starting the fine tuning process, it is important, it is very very important to write down the exact measurements of your bow. Having all the equipment information documented will allow you to return to the initial settings if something strange or odd happens during the entire fine tuning process. When your bow and arrow are fully compatible, an optimum arrow flight and grouping has been achieved, then you will want to redocument the equipment for future reference. What I'm going to tell you is the is that most of the information that should be included in the document. These are the information that positively needs to be included. One, knocking point height. Two, racing height. Number three, tiller. Number four, number of strands in the bowstring and type of material used. Number five, type of center serving and end serving, the end serving. Next, bowstring weight, user grain scale. And then, weight of bow at full draw. What is the weight exactly? Then, type of stabilizers used, the length, amount of weight on each rod. In other words, let me tell you, everything you can think of to document your equipment, to please document. Next, number all your arrows. This enables you to plot groups and to plot each individual arrow. This process is very, very important in discovering which of your arrows group consistently and those that don't. Another good uh, tip is to place a small dot on one fletch of your arrow each time that arrow hits the pin or the X. Best to do this only for the longer distances. Pretty soon it is clear what arrows you will want to use in your trials or your competitions or your selections or your state or your national meets. The ones with the most dots. When you are ready to start the fine tuning process, use a new 40 cm target uh, face and use it as the plotting target. This will allow you to record each arrow impact and the number of that arrow to determine common impact points for each arrow in the bunch. Prepare to shoot from a distance you are most comfortable with, mostly uh, say 50 or even 60, yards, 60 uh, uh, meters. On a face size, again you are comfortable with, whether it's going to be a 20 centimeter or 80 centimeter or 122 centimeter and depending on your skill level. Shoot an end or two to warm up before starting the plotting process. After warming up, shoot a group of 6 to 10 fleshed arrows. Write down the number of each arrow and the impact point on the sample plotting target. Shoot at least two groups before making any adjustments. Remember to make only one adjustment at a time. While making a tuning adjustment, Use a different colored pen for each time an adjustment is made or use another plotting target so the results are not confused between each arrow. Examine the group for patterns to see if the group is more vertical than horizontal or more horizontal than vertical or if there are not discernible patterns. 
reading the plotted arrow groups. This is the next section. Carefully examine the arrow grouping patterns you plotted. Note the different shapes of the groups and how the adjustments alter the arrow impact and size of the groups. Examine each arrow by its number. Take careful note of any arrows that did not group consistently with the other shafts. Monitor these shafts to see if they are consistently out of the group as you will probably want to mark these shafts so you will know not to use them in competition. So you make sure it's not used in competitions. Now vertical grouping patterns. If the groups are more vertical than horizontal, adjust the knocking point 1 by 32, there's 0.8 mm either up or down. Shoot another two groups and plot the arrows in the same manner as described above. For future reference, be sure to write down your bow adjustment on each arrow group you plot. Measure the distance between the high and low arrow to determine an average between the groups. This will help to identify the high and low arrow impact has improved or not in the next grouping sequence. If it has improved, make another adjustment of 1 by 32.8 mm in the same direction and shoot another two ends. If the high and low arrow impact is better, continue in that direction until you achieve the most consistent group elevation. Obviously, if the vertical impacts are worse, go back to the original setting and make the same adjustment in the opposite direction. Now, horizontal grouping patterns. While tuning, remember to continue the documenting process on each plotted arrow group for the one tuning variable that was changed. For horizontal adjustments, it is best to adjust only the cushion plunger spring tension, not the in or position of the cushion plunger button. Make adjustments to the cushion plunger spring tension in 1 by 8 turn increments only, not fully. Shoot two groups and measure the farthest left and the right arrows, eliminating arrows when known mistakes were made in the technique. You know that you made a wrong mistake, wrong shot. Do not include those arrows. Make the first spring tension adjustment either stiffer or weaker and shoot two more ends. Again, if the group becomes wider, go back to the original setting and make an adjustment of 1 by 8 turn in the opposite direction. Compare the groups you just shot and determine if they are getting better or worse. If the group improves, if the groups improve, make another adjustment on 1 by 8 turn in the same direction and shoot another two ends. Continue this process until you have achieved the tightest possible grouping in the horizontal plane at that distance. If the groups do not change, Continue following this procedure until the groups improve or become wider. At the point where the groups just start to get wider, go back one by eight turn to the previous setting and make a small knocking point adjustment. Remember, adjustments to the cushion plunger will often have some effect on the knocking point, on the knocking point. And it may be necessary to make small adjustments to the knocking point during the cushion plunger adjustments. Here is where you should see some significant group changes, hopefully better. Remember to make only one adjustment at a time. If the groups become worse, go back to the original knocking point setting and make the same adjustment in the opposite direction to come back. Continue this process until the best groups have been achieved with a single adjustment. Then start making one by turn by one by eight turn spring tension adjustments to see what happens to the grouping patterns. Obviously, if the groups are consistently great, stop. 
and re-document all the settings. The fine-tuning process is a dynamic relationship between the knocking pond height and the cushion plunger spring tension. Any change to one affects the other. You take it up and down, it affects the plunger pressure. You increase or decrease the plunger pressure, it affects the knocking point area. And it is important to understand this relationship. When making only one adjustment at a time, you will find the ability to continuously compress the up and down, right and left grouping patterns into the patterns into the best possible grouping your skill level is capable of. After completing, after completing this procedure, you should find a combination of adjustments that will either slightly or significantly improve arrow grouping. Once you have completed the long distance tuning, move to 18, yard, 18 meters and see if the bow continues to group well here too. It should, but if not, look for a clearance problem. By shooting all your competition distances at the end of the fine tuning, you will have confidence in knowing that your equipment can perform well in any distance when shooting in a competition, trial or selection or a state, national or international meet. Well, Archery Coach training so much for this session. Catch you soon with the next part. Let's break up here. Since the lecture is loaded with information, it will not get into your head easily. If it does, you must be a brilliant uh, archer, a brilliant doctor of light, a brilliant mass person and a brilliant genius. Please listen to the lecture over and over again in your headphones. This will truly help you understand what I have been telling in the last eight sections on recurve tuning. Keep repeating it till you are thorough with it. I will be explaining every part of this lecture in simple detail in, all, in several sessions all through the year with many more lectures in a language that you will understand either Tamil or Hindi. Till you have completely grasped it, it has gone into your head and sinked in your heart. God bless you. We'll come back again with the last and final section soon. Cool.